I met Ed when he first came. I was on the original committee that hired Ed. I was kind of, okay, he seems like a nice enough guy. Let's see if he's got his stuff together. We were concerned but not impatient. We had to find the right person. You know, when Ed first got here, Opportunity Village was, uh, we couldn't make payroll. I mean, fundraising was fine, but the rest of the organization was struggling. And so my hopes were, would, was that Ed would get us out of this mess that we'd gotten ourselves into. And boy, did he ever. When we found Ed, uh, we knew we were up in the game a little bit, and, um, and we got what we wanted. Uh, Ed uh, was everything we had hoped for. He introduced himself. I just remembered that as they were giving me a proposal, I kept looking at him, and he had this smile on his face, and the smile was um, more or less like he knew something I didn't know. <laughs> and, I, and I still think he knows something I don't know. And when Ed got here, things changed quick. Very shortly, Ed was like, we need a campus in. Henderson, and I was looking at him like, I wonder if I should quit now? Ed knew, even back then, that we were going to have to serve so many more people because more people were moving into the area. It was the beginning of the population boom. You know, I think we were in the throes of raising the money for Henderson when he started talking about the Northwest campus. That time I wanted to kill him. He made sure that everything came in on time, on budget. Not only that, under budget. I'm going to guess 300 people here when Ed got here. We serve 1,990 people every day now. You know, if, if we hadn't seen this type of responsibility and awareness and reactivity to the client population and to how they handle donor money, we wouldn't have come back. He got us to think bigger, more globally. We didn't realize that Ed really was one of the experts in, in government laws and federal bureaucracy. He put Opportunity Village on the national map by taking on difficult issues. I watch him work nationally. I get to watch those peer groups interact with him with such a degree of respect. You know, this organization existed for 40 years before we got here. And, you know, we're a pretty decent organization. We are now internationally known and respected. And, and I have to give Ed 100% of that credit. Linda, Linda's the, the front person, and she's fabulous. But there is somebody who has to be behind, who makes sure all the pieces connect, and everybody talks, and everybody plays their part, and that guy's Ed Guthrie. Ed has developed this uh, environment where the kids really get along with each other. It's become their social life, and uh, they all know Ed. He has great integrity and uh, he never forgets who it is that he's serving and what he's doing. The OVIPs are his number one. He always lets us know that if it wasn't for them, none of us would be here. It really is about Glenn, and it's about Alonzo, and it's about Derek, and it's about Sarah. It's about those people that are always people in his eyes. He has this almost fatherly compassion for this place and for the people inside it. There have been occasions when I've said, Ed, it's not such a good day. <laughs> and he's been very understanding to that and pet me up and told me it's going to get better. Thank you, Ed! You can tell that he loves what he does and you can tell that he loves being here. It inspires you that this is the field that you should be in. And it's a gift we render a service. This is actually a mission job. Yes, we all need to survive with a, a paycheck, but this field, this population, this has to come from here. Most people with the tenure, most time they have someone in their family that has a disability, but he, he, just, he just lays it all on the line. This is a mission. And being on this mission with Ed has been so gratifying. If it were not for Ed, there would be thousands of people without jobs. If it were not for Ed, I would have a more normal life. <laughs> because I, I know he's plotting and planning right now some other crazy, you know, 25 acres in some other part of the community or, you know, we know. If it weren't for Ed, I probably wouldn't be as competitive and fighting for grants as hard as I do. 
But I do have to tell you, if it weren't for Ed, we would probably sell more hot dogs and hamburgers in the forest because he used to be our burger flipper and our hot dog person, and it didn't work out so well. And if it weren't for Ed, Opportunity Village would not be known on the, on the national scene. There would be a lot of people who would be home and not growing and not having a social life. So if not for Ed, there'd be a lot less happy lives. I might not even be here if it weren't for Ed, so truthfully, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you. I think that anyone who has spent as long as Ed has doing what he does deserves a huge congratulation. And to be as enormously successful as Ed is, uh, kudos to him beyond all. I'd just like to say congratulations, Ed, on your 20th, and hopefully we'll have another 20. Congratulations, Ed, on hanging in there for 20 years, putting up with me, and most important, uh, of being loved by all of your employees and all of the citizens that we serve here. He's not going anywhere, so I'm not going to say I'm going to miss you. He's here with us, and I, I look forward to the next 20 years. On behalf of the Las Vegas community, um, thank you for bringing your expertise to our, our homes. can't believe that it's been 20 years. 20 years of um, being the stand-up guy and doing the right thing all the time. I'm just so proud of you. The work that you've done here at Opportunity Village is insurmountable. We love you, congratulations.